Welcome to M&P Production. Today, I've got one of my favorite guns, a Smith & Wesson third model 44 hand ejector, sometimes known as a model 1926, sometimes called the Wolf & Klar model. Why Wolf & Klar? Well, this gun, we have to go back a little bit on some back history. The 44 special handgun was designed by Smith & Wesson back uh, around the turn of the century, or the last century, 1898-1900. They came out with the uh, 44 hand ejector, which was in the brand new 44 Special Caliber, which was the uh, triple lock, first model 44. Uh, they made those for a number of years, and then they came out with the second model. Biggest difference between it is uh, it eliminated the locking mechanism that the triple lock had, made the gun simpler, eliminated the shroud, which was difficult and time consuming to manufacture, and they came up with a second model. Well, these guns were popular with law enforcement in the Southwest and other parts of the United States where lawmen had to uh, shoot people on a fairly, you know, often occasion and uh, by golly they wanted something but you know they carried a big gun so when they got shot they stayed shot but uh, very few of these guns were manufactured um, compared to the K frame the 38 special caliber guns um, I don't know the direct numbers but I would guess for every N frame Smith made they made uh, 500 38 caliber guns. I mean, it's just just a huge disproportionate number. So the end frame guns are pretty rare. Uh, but back to Wolf and Clark was a uh, big law enforcement distributor in Fort Worth, Texas. And in the 1920s, they had uh, lawmen or customers that wanted the shroud back on the 44 Special Smith & Wesson. So um, I guess Wolf and Claw asked Smith to do this, and for a big enough order, Smith said, we'll make them any way you want them. And uh, so they did. And most all of them went to Wolf and Claw, this, like this one did. It's documented in this factory letter. And let me read it to you. We have researched your Smith & Wesson 44 hand ejector, third model. Model of 1926, pre-World War II variation, caliber 44 Special, revolver and company records, which indicate that your handgun with serial number 34483 was shipped from our factory on March 21, 1930, and delivered to Wolf and Clark Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Records indicate that this revolver was shipped with a nickel finish and checkered walnut grips. This shipment was for one unit with a four inch barrel and 28 units with a five inch barrel. Obviously, this is one of the five inch barrel guns. Wish it was a four inch, but we got what we got. Um, the four inch guns are by far the most desirable and therefore the most expensive. Um, they made about 5,000 of these, a little less than 5,000 went of these guns were manufactured. Um, so they're particularly rare, and the vast majority of those went to Wolf and Clark. This one is in really nice shape, original finish, tight lockup, excellent bore. Shows some loss of finish on this side. Let me get it focused in here. I think it's due to strap from a holster, but obviously this gun saw some duty. as a service revolver. Beautiful gun. This is one of my favorite guns. And I'm not alone, judging by the price what these things bring these days. Other people want them too. Beautiful gun. Hey, don't make them like that no more, unfortunately. Um, 
I've shot this gun, it shoots really good. You gotta reload for it. Uh, factory ammo is crazy expensive and you don't wanna run warm loads through this gun so I load them down. Um, it's enjoyable to shoot, it's very accurate. Um, I uh, don't see them that often. Um, I've had, well this is the second one of these I've had. I had a blue four inch years ago that I foolishly sold and I wish I had kept it because it was really a rare blue most of them were nickel and it was four inch so and it went to Wolf and Clark also so I'm hanging on to this one I'm not going to be dumb twice so I'm going to keep this one if you ever run across one of these buy it because it's a rare number it's interesting history southwest history um, that was an interesting part of the world back in the 1930s and these guns were uh, carried by serious men who were doing serious work. like so um I just thought I'd bring you that to you today. And if you have any questions, please ask. If you would like, hit the like button and subscribe. Be glad to have you. Plan to do more videos on old collectible guns, modern guns, whatever. I like them all. <laughs>